Hello girls, I'll just take you through today's work. In our last lesson we had a really good look at the Cuban Missile Crisis, the whole issue of Cuba. Today we're going to be focusing on the Berlin Wall. The core activity will involve you looking at one historian's perspective on JFK in relation to the issue of Berlin. It's quite an admiring perspective. But there's an extension activity. It's optional, but there's some very useful material in a linked article uh, relating to quite a different perspective to the one in the core activity. So historians viewing JFK's response to the Berlin issue uh, in very different ways. Okay, let's just remind ourselves of what's on the teacher overview. We've been through this in class, so I would like I'm not going to go through it now. I'm not going to read it. You can do that. It's quite a simple explanation. So I would like you to start off by doing that, please. Okay, today's activity. Let me just get that a little bit bigger. Okay, this is the source. So I've got it referenced for you. Okay, we're going to remind ourselves of the context as it relates to the article. So as we know, the case of a divided Berlin was a particularly important issue for Kennedy because by 1961, the Soviet Union had not only declared its intention to absorb West Berlin into the rest of East Germany, but it had attempted to do so in 1948 through the Berlin blockade. So Berlin was an issue prior to the Berlin Wall. Okay, the Berlin blockade of 1948 had involved the Soviet Union blocking all transport access to West Berlin in the hope that Britain, France and the USA would let go of Berlin and the whole city would be forced to submit to Soviet control. Now girls, when Germany was divided and Berlin was divided, we've still got allegiance of sorts between the Soviet Union, Britain and the USA, and to a lesser degree, um, France. The intention was, at least in overt open discussions, that this would be a temporary situation. They would denazify Germany and then Germany would gradually be allowed to have its autonomy fully returned. However, we've then got the Cold War. Hitler's gone. We've got these mounting ideological tensions. So things change. The political landscape changes and the Soviet Union wants Berlin to be absorbed into Eastern Germany. Okay, but this is not something that the USA wants to happen. And of course, the West Berliners are very vulnerable, as we've discussed on a number of occasions, because they're in the middle of this Soviet sea, so to speak. Okay, Soviet perspective on the Berlin Wall, American perspective on the Berlin Wall. Revisit the teacher overview and have a think about that before you start this exercise. Okay, Robert Waite on JFK's leadership. So Robert Waite is an historian. He is the author of this particular chapter of an edited book. And I've got some excerpts from the chapter below. So you're not needing to read the whole chapter. So Robert Waite argues that JFK was a president who chose his words very cautiously in his public statements about Berlin 
And sometimes he chose silence because he was making a conscious effort not to aggravate the Soviet Union. At the same time, Robert Waite paints a portrait of a JFK who balanced this softly, softly approach with strong and determined language when it was necessary. According to Waite, JFK's sensitivity to language was evidence of his effective leadership, as was his strong but limited action in relation to the Berlin Wall. Your core task is to identify and copy quotations from the article that praise Kennedy for his responsible use of language, not only responsible use of language, but effective use of language. Use at least two of these quotations in a short paragraph which argues that Kennedy's effective use of language made him an effective leader. So you are practicing integrating quotations into a short paragraph. Now this is the extension task. It's optional. This particular article that's linked cites a number of historians who argue that Kennedy did not handle political exchanges effectively when he met with Khrushchev at a Vienna summit on June 4th, 1961, only two months before the Soviet's erection of the Berlin Wall in August. It's actually quite an interesting article. Okay, so what insights does the article provide into Khrushchev's perspective on Kennedy at the time of the Vienna summit? The article is gold in terms of providing supporting arguments that conflict with Robert Waite's admiring view of Kennedy. We see, you know, here there is the portrait of a Kennedy that is a bit bumbling. He says too much. There's an immaturity there that Khrushchev identifies. But Richard Reeves has pointed out, historian Richard Reeves, that Kennedy was someone who was able to learn from his mistakes. Yet again, you know, the article does paint this portrait of Kennedy at a time when he was less experienced and he is portrayed as the political lesser, so he's less effective. Um, he's in fact dominated by Khrushchev at the Vienna summit. So the Vienna summit was all about getting together and the leaders could discuss and possibly resolve issues. Didn't turn out like that at all. Khrushchev was quite dominant and he was insistent that Berlin, well, the statement was that Berlin should be made free. Everyone should be free. Uh, but which basically meant that the USA um, and the other allies would completely withdraw from Berlin and Berlin would then, it was very clear to Kennedy, would come under the power of the Soviet Union. Okay, so the article is really useful in terms of providing supporting arguments that conflict with Robert Waite's admiring view, as we've got here. And it's also useful for students choosing Khrushchev as a real historical personality with views on Kennedy. And it's, yeah, it's an interesting article. So here are some paragraphs from the larger article, girls. And your focus will be narrow in terms of this core activity. So you'll be identifying and copying quotations that praise Kennedy for his responsible use of language. Remember that often just a phrase, a phrase from the quotation um, with the rest of the perspective paraphrased. You know, when you're actually using the quotation in your paragraph, don't make it too long. And this, as I've said, this exercise is optional. Today, I want you to submit the work you do on Canvas. 
So that assignment box has been set up and published. So I will be looking for that work, girls, and it is my expectation that it is done. But you've done, you're doing very well. Um, very pleased with what most people produced yesterday. So all the best.